Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to give you an update on our plants that we moved last week, the tubera sundews. I'm going to talk a little bit more about growing cannabis plants in the USA. First off, as you guys know, um, we moved our plants last week onto the water table. And in that video, you might have seen like all the plants already half growing, like I moved them out a little bit too late. And yeah, the reason for this is because I just kind of forgot about them a little bit. I knew that I had to move them out in March, but I thought that it was later in March, but you can move them out sooner in March. And the reason why I say March is not because it's like the date, it's because it's the start of roundabout autumn time or fall in the USA. So I don't know when that is for you guys in the Northern Hemisphere, but whenever it is autumn or fall, that's when you want to move your tuberous sun juice out of their dormancy and, you know, outside into a water table so that they can start growing. They like to be kept um, dry during the summer and obviously wet in the winter because that's when they grow. So that's why we move them out. And as you guys can see from the video, they're looking really good. They're growing really, really quickly now. They honestly just shoot up out of nowhere because, you know, it's tuberous sun juice. They only grow for six months at a time, six to eight months, depending on the species. Some of them like 10, uh, like Drusel and Lanata, they just grow forever. Um, as long as they have water, but yeah, they just grow um, super quickly. So the fact that I move them out, all the pots are wet now and they're growing super quick now because they have the water and it's cooling down, it's becoming winter for them. They're super, super happy. And there's not much else to say really about the tuberous sun juice, except that, yeah, they're just growing crazy. Um, they look weird though, like on the ends of their, how, what, stolons, I guess. You can see that they're like kind of really thick. Now, I'm not sure if that is because I didn't take them out of the garage soon enough, so they kind of like grew funny, or like if they're trying to, if they're growing extra thick because of something else. I don't know. It's quite strange. It's something I haven't seen with tuberous dresser before because this is my, only my second ever season growing tuberous sun juice. So yeah, it's a little bit of an, of an interesting one for me to be seeing that. But yeah, tell me what you guys think about it. Anyway, that's that for the tuberous sun juice, the update. The rest of the plants looking pretty bad <laughs> as they as they do. And you guys know that from the last video. Um, but they, yeah, there's not much I can really do about their health. Unfortunately, I can't change where I live currently. But on that subject, um, I want to address what happened in the last video. Quite a few people messaged me saying, am I all right? Like, you seem very sad and down and stuff. And as I kind of touched on in the previous video, I have been going through a very, very difficult, um, like six months in the past six months, obviously. Um, but everything's getting much better now, guys. So thank you for your concern. I do appreciate it, um, but I am all good. Um, I am obviously sad about the plants not doing well, but it's not a problem. We will fix them. We want to sort it all out. But yeah, the, the plants will never end, guys. Um, personally, things in my life like got really difficult. Like I met someone and there was a really terrible person and it really messes you up. I'm sure you guys know that. Some of you asked me specifically about that. And yeah, that happened. But now things are looking much better. Um, things are on the up if that makes sense and yeah so guys thanks for the concern but I'm all good now things are still tough though but yeah but on that note I also spoke about moving again so some of you guys who follow me um, on Instagram um, and those who see my community page on, on, in, on YouTube so if you don't see that make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see those tabs in those videos because I ask questions every now and then because I want you guys opinions and that's why I'm addressing this now I want to move somewhere for a lot of reasons and one big one is for the plants health now I've been looking around the whole of Australia um, for cooler areas where I could grow the plants where I could could eventually buy like a property that you know have enough space to grow the plants and all that stuff and I've been finding it pretty difficult besides that Importing plants into Australia, some of you might know, is extremely difficult and extremely expensive. Let me give you the breakdown. If you want to import a plant into Australia, a plant like, shit, like one of our plants on the table, like just a capensis, for example. If you want to import that, this is what you need to do. 
You need to get your input permits, which can cost up to five grand. It all depends on something. There's no real set up value. You have to just go on the website and they tell you at the end of it. So I can't really just check. But for a nursery size operation, which is what I want to do eventually, it's about five grand. After that, you have to ensure that the plant is a plant that is allowed into Australia. And there's like a list of plants allowed and puts it on plants that aren't allowed. And then there's a list of plants that they don't know if they are aren't allowed. So you have to get, you have to pay for them to do the research to find out if you can or can't let the plant into the country. But we know Capensis can come in. And this is all on the Barcon website for Australia guys, just so you know. Um, so yeah, get the plants in. You need to make sure that they're allowed in, get the permits. You need to get a five to sanitary certificate. That's fair, you know, you want to ensure the plant is clean and has no viruses, no issues. Next up, you have to ensure it has no soil on it, you know, no particles and whatever. That's fair, no insects, all good. Then you have to let the biosecurity officers know that you're going to be importing a plant. So you have to send them uh, an email correspondence, like a notice of inspection, that's what's called an NOI. Then you have to tell them on the boxes, notice like attention, biosecurity. So they know that this is the plant. Then it's obviously career fees from anywhere else in the world to Australia. Pretty expensive because we live in the middle of nowhere. Then after that, then you have to pay for them to inspect your plants. Then you have to pay for the insecticides and the fumigation. And that's pretty expensive. And as we know, cannabis plants don't really like to get fumigated or sprayed with um, any type of chemicals. But you know, in most circumstances, yeah, like you can do that. You can kind of nurture them back to health. But the problem is this. After you've paid all of that, and paid for them to fumigate your plants to essentially kill your plants off. They then have to quarantine for three months in a facility that they choose. So you have to pay for three months of them looking after your looking after your plants, so they can watch the growth to ensure that the growth doesn't come back deformed or sick or anything. So you have to pay three months of rent for your plants in a facility which we all know 90% of the time won't give them the correct care. Um, so the plant will most likely die anyway. So you're looking at about $15,000, let's say, if you're doing a decent sized implant, just of import, implant, I mean, importing them, the plants. So you guys can see where I'm getting at here. It gets quite pricey. Now imagine you want to import like Nepenthes Edwardsiana from Festuba up in Germany. I mean, that plant can cost a couple hundred euros, a couple thousand dollars. Then it's the phytos, obviously. Then it's the career costs then it's all of that other stuff I just told you about can get pretty expensive and not easy at all um, and that becomes a big problem especially if you want plants or cultivars because as we know you can't bring seeds of plants in they won't be cultivars they will just be similar to the parents so that's one big issue we can't bring the plants that we want to in um, and that's a bigger issue for rare plants which you can't get seeds of anyway like let's say heliumphora you can't, you can't get seeds of them. No one sells the seeds. And you can't get seeds of Nepenthes, Edwarsiana, Velosa, Hamata, Leonardoi, Aristolochioides. Like some of these are like really rare plants. You can't get seeds of them unless they're like legal. But why would we support that? And even if you do bring seeds in, I've done it before. It, bringing seeds in is not easy. I had to bring them in myself with on my person. And I had to follow lots and lots and lots of very strict rules to bring them in it was very tough so yeah bringing in those plants not easy but you can bring in tissue culture plants so what you need to do for tissue culture plants well make sure that you obviously get your input permits that you get your that they're allowed into the country and they have to be from an approved source right so it has to be from a lab that has paid the Australian government to inspect them to make sure that they're clean enough and whatever okay there's like five or so labs and that's pretty gets pretty tough to obviously get those labs in on what you want to do but I have contacted them and I called them and say hey like I want to bring these plants and like you know what, what do we need to do and here's the next issue the next issue comes in in that it's tissue culture you're going to be getting you have to pay for like 10,000 plants at once so it's a pretty big import I don't have space for 10,000 plants I don't even own a property for 10,000 plants I can't like you just can't, I can't do that, you know? And that's obviously really expensive. And then it's the same thing, import permits and stuff. You have to pay for the biosecurity officers to check 100% of all of the imports. So they have to check every single vial. So someone has to spend their time checking 10,000 vials of tissue culture plants, which can become expensive. 
And then you obviously need to have the facilities, which I don't and can't get here right now, especially this time in my life in Australia. Um, so yeah, importing plants, the one thing, like my biggest passion and dream and goal in life of doing something really big with these plants is becoming very difficult, I'm realizing here in Australia. Um, so I'm not too sure what to do about that, but I have been looking at moving to the United States. Um, the reason for this, there's more than just the plants reason, but that's a big one in terms of work, property prices, um, standard of living, stuff like that, accessibility of things. It's much better in the USA, um, compared to here, but I really like Australia too. So it's a bit of a, what can I do? But if I want to follow my dreams of opening up greenhouses and opening up a nursery for these plants and growing these plants and selling them around the world, it's much easier to do from the US than what it is to do from the U from Australia. Because if I want to sell plants to you guys who always ask me for plants, most of you guys in America, I can't send from Australia to America. It's just, it's too expensive. It's like $50 to send a plant to you guys and then I need export permits and fire to things and I can't get these things here. So yeah, in the, in the US will be much easier to be able to get a property in a, in a climate that gives me what I want. Property will be cheaper, labor is cheaper, costs of building stuff is cheaper, importing plants into the US is cheaper. So yeah, guys, there's heaps of reasons. These are just the plant reasons. But yeah, my question to you guys is, where in the USA would you recommend? I've been looking at Nevada, Arizona, and Texas. The reason why is because they're pretty sunny areas. They are warm, they get hot, but dry, but they also have cooler areas in them, and they're also very sunny. So like Arizona, for example, is the sunniest state in the USA. It is a desert that gets really hot and dry which means we can cool it down much easier with evaporative coolers. But if I live in an area that's high in elevation where it's cooler, all we have to do is just heat them up. And all we, like we all know, heating up a place is much easier than cooling a place down. So let's say I go to get a property that is like, gets down to like zero, one degrees Celsius, like 32 degrees Fahrenheit at nighttime. You build a greenhouse, it will keep the temperature about five degrees Celsius warmer that would be perfect for ultra highland plants. You can't get temperatures like that for ultra highland plants with evaporative coolers and um, air cons and stuff. You just can't. So you get a, you get that environment perfect for the ultra highlanders. Get them perfect for the lowlanders and stuff because they just need more heat. Then your temperate plants because the external environment is fairly mild because it will go down to zero in winter, eighteen during the day in summer, and in, uh, in winter. And in summer, the, it will go to 12 at night and 28 during the day in the cooler areas of, let's say, Arizona. Like, that's perfect for temperate plants. So it will be perfect for the tropicals because you can cool them down. The temperatures get down cold enough at night. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of, guys. So let me know where in the U.S. you guys recommend. So, like I said, I've looked at those three so far. Maybe you guys know some more places. But, yeah. That's where my mind is at right now, guys. Um, let me know what you think. The plants are a huge passion of mine, obviously. And I want to open up a business with them. I want to open up nurseries, um, garden centers with carnivorous plants. And I want to be able to allow you guys, the public, to come and look at the plants and people to come into the facilities and walk amongst the plants and like see them. I can't really do that here in Australia because all the properties where I can grow the plants are in the middle of nowhere and they're expensive and not enough space and getting the plants in here anyway near like next to next to impossible for the average person like myself you need to be really rich which i'm obviously not <laughs> so yeah guys tell me what you think what is your opinions and thoughts and everything um if you have any questions about the plants i'm happy to help email me instagram me facebook me message in the comments but yeah guys and i'm i, I am good i'm just quieter i guess but i am i'm genuinely i'm fine guys but thanks for the concern um very excited actually about my future but yeah guys let me know what you think and uh i'll see you guys in the next episode i don't know if that will be next weekend or not because i'm back to studies in the next following week so i'm back to working 12 hour days and uh so yeah guys very excited let me know what you say anyway i'll see you guys then